So I frankly find it chilling when I hear it. I hear it all the time. We don't have enough planet Earth to go around. It's not like China's burning a lot of coal just to make trinkets at Walmart. They get 92% of their electricity from coal. I live in the Bay Area. I get half of my electricity is hydro. So my electricity prices are not going to go up anywhere close to how their electricity prices are going to go up, and yet we're going to get the same amount of money? How is that equitable? I, I, guess, I guess I'm sort of a, the apocalypse um, um, viewpoint that um, you know, the chances are that we've already reached the tipping point and we're going to be building the dikes regardless. The number one reason that people say they wanted to buy a Prius is because they wanted people to know that they were driving a hybrid. And what they did is they showed uh, videos of various climate change disasters to ordinary voters, you know, hurricanes, floods, all the kind of biblical uh, disasters I think we're all familiar with. This was, uh, quote, the layering on of dire consequences, in fact, reinforces, reinforces that this problem is too big to address. Instead of supporting increased cafe or fuel economy standards, for example, they are likely to buy an SUV to help them through the erratic weather to come. Um, and uh, we, were, we were kind of left with this feeling that really uh, the, the focus so overwhelmingly on pollution regulations, on cap, what gets called cap and trade, was really misplaced. And there was something that environmental groups weren't really dealing with when it came to the politics of climate change. And that was this sort of overwhelming focus on the need for economic sacrifice to avoid apocalypse rather than on a framework of investing in economic uh, innovation an opportunity in order to create jobs 
and really create whole new industries in the United States that could uh, really grow our way out of both an economic uh, stagnation and also out of a climate crisis. We wrote in this essay, we sort of said, look, you know, if that's environmentalism, then that needs to die and we need a new politics. China famously was building uh, two, two coal-fired power plants a week. India was uh, also expanding into, into coal. Need to uh, build 30 new nuclear power plants. And keep in mind that we haven't built a new one here in the United States uh, since the late 70s. Uh, you would need to build 17,000 wind turbines. Keep in mind that you know they're having a hard time just building uh, a few dozen off the coast of Cape Cod because of the, the powerful resistance from the Kennedy family and other families there. 400 biomass power plants uh, which are still really only in demonstration uh, phase. They said you'd have to build two hydroelectric power plants the size of the Three Gorges Dam in China. I don't know if you've ever seen the Three Gorges <laughs> Dam in China, but it's in a, it makes the Hoover Dam look small in comparison. They've been building it for about 50 years. Um, it's taken, you know, they've had to, they had to, I think they had to move like o over a million people. Um, they said you'd also have to construct 42 coal or natural gas power plants that, that sequestered the emissions or what they call captured and stored the emissions underground or under the oceans uh, so that they wouldn't go into the atmosphere. And they said you wouldn't do this once. You'd actually have to do this every year from 2013 to 2030. Um, and it really was a sobering, I think, presentation for folks who felt like, well, we just got to put a cap in place. It's very straightforward and have it go down. They were looking at all these different ways to raise taxes. Raising taxes on gasoline uh, were the least popular of the approaches and got taken off the table. Got a lot of points I'd like to make. I'm an environmental regulator and have been an environmentalist, I guess, for many years. And I think the picture you paint of those of us who are so-called environmentalists is a bit off. Um, and I, I, I could go on. I'd probably rather do it over a beer after the meeting because I have a couple of more important points I think I'd like to make. There's a lot I disagree with, but part of what I do agree with is that the energy sector, I think, is really where the the ball game is right now, not only in the United States, but worldwide. If we don't do something about it very quickly, and I mean very quickly, we are going to have major problems. And I am a Jim Hansen acolyte. I just got his missive today. If anybody hasn't read it, uh, you should. It's a letter he's writing to the Secretary of Climate Change in Australia, which is the country that's probably right now most devastated by the consequences of uh, climate change. Um, and he makes a case um, for what he would call a carbon tax with a full rebate. 